What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. In today's episode we're going to be discussing what some of the biggest threats to sharks are in our oceans today. Sharks being threatened is pretty common knowledge and there are lots and lots of shark populations that are in real trouble. But what is the main thing that is causing these declines? I'm going to ask you guys to do something in the comments right now before carrying on watching the rest of this video. So pause this video right now and let me know in the comments what you think is the number one threat to sharks and rays today. Don't worry there's no wrong answers here we're all learning on Shark Bites just pause this video, type away, and let me know what you think it is in the comments. So probably right now there's a fair few of you typing things like shark finning, the shark meat trade, climate change, pollution. But what if I were to tell you it's none of those things? Okay, okay, they are all threats to sharks, but they're not the main one. So make sure you stick around to the latter part of this video to find out exactly which one it is. First off though, I wouldn't blame you for thinking it was one of those threats that I previously mentioned. Because it's actually been scientifically proven that there are inherent biases in the media which dictates what people think about shark conservation. What we read about in the news or listen to on the radio or watch on television all greatly influence what we think about particular topics and our beliefs around those topics and the same can be said for shark conservation. And in the study that I'm referring to here the threat that was mentioned the most in the media was shark finning and it cropped up in nearly 70% of all articles that were written about shark conservation and threats. I guess it's kind of easy to understand why the media might highlight this threat the most because it's probably one of the most gruesome and shocking things that you might hear about in relation to shark threats. And the media is always going to want to surprise and shock you so that you click on the article. But shark finning is simply not the biggest threat that sharks and rays face around the world. I think one of the crazy things here though is that we're still working off estimated population impacts for these different threats. And we're not able to definitively separate the threats and figure out how many sharks are being killed by each individual threat because they all come under the same umbrella or a somewhat related to each other. For example, there's been loads of numbers banded around over the last 10 years or so as to how many sharks are being killed per year. I think the number that you'll have probably read the most is 100 million, but even that's just an estimate. It actually comes from a paper in which they had a range estimate of 63 million to 273 million sharks per year. So you can see there's a huge range in those estimates. And most media outlets just decided to go with the somewhat average of 100 million sharks per year. To my knowledge, since that paper came out in 2013, no one has attempted to update those numbers or even try to narrow down those range estimates, which is pretty crazy. But at the same time, it's because it's really, really hard to do that. How do you narrow down that range when reporting of these shark death numbers around the world is pretty erratic and some of the numbers are probably being fudged behind the scenes. It's very, very difficult. Right, okay, let's start talking about some of the different threats that sharks face globally and I'm going to rank them for you from the least threatening to the most threatening. Not that the least threatening one is just not having any impact at all, it still is, it's just the least threatening on this list. Up first, it's pollution. So in this threat category, we're talking about all kinds of different pollution. That's plastic pollution, chemical runoff, oil spills, etc. And I think it's interesting because plastic pollution gets a lot more coverage in the media than some of the threats that we're going to talk about today. And when I wrote my papers on sharks and plastic pollution, it got a lot of media attention. And that's because it's shocking and it gets the clicks. But realistically, plastic pollution isn't of major conservation concern for sharks and rays right now. It might be in the future. And also if it was combined with other threats, it could snowball. But for now, plastic pollution isn't causing major population declines in sharks. It is definitely an animal welfare issue though and that's the conclusions that we came to when we were writing those research papers. Other types of pollution are of course threatening to sharks. For example, oil spills can't be good for them but your major oil spills, like the ones that are catastrophic, don't really happen that often. Again, it's not something that's going to cause huge population declines in sharks, but it definitely does fall under the category of an animal welfare issue. Okay, next up we have climate change. It's funny, every now and again here on Shark Bites, I'll mention climate change and then I'll get some real angry people in the comments. Like, what did you expect me to believe? I'm a scientist. I'm gonna believe in climate change. <laughs> but whether you believe it's real or it's not, it definitely is, it will be impacting shark populations as we move into the future. We're already seeing climate change impacts on shark and ray species right now. Changing ocean temperatures are going to start pushing the home ranges of sharks to different places. And some of those places might not be suitable for those sharks, or the sharks that move there might displace a current species that's already living there. With climate change, you have to think about all the different knock-on effects that it's going to have across the marine food web. So with changing ocean conditions, it might impact the prey species of that shark or the habitat which 
which it relies on, and that shark might not be able to adapt quickly enough to deal with that change. Then you also have to look at the direct impacts on the shark from climate change. So there's already been a study with epaulette sharks that showed their offspring hatched from their egg cases earlier and weaker as a result of warmer temperatures. And if your offspring are being born weaker, then their chances of surviving to adulthood become lower and bang, you've got a population decline problem on your hands. The impact of climate change is probably going to be more prominent in shark species who are already dwindling in their numbers. And to be fair, there are some shark species that might actually benefit from climate change. So it's going to be very species specific. Again, though, this is a problem that is going to be worse in the future. And right now we're only just seeing the start of it. And the number of sharks directly impacted by climate change right now is definitely lower than that of the next few threats that we're going to talk about. Okay, up next, we've got habitat loss. The location in which sharks and rays spend their lives is a really crucial factor in their health and survival. If you start to degrade their habitat, you are inevitably going to get population declines. Sharks and rays depend on a whole suite of different habitat types from mangroves to estuaries to coral reefs and seagrass meadows, all of these are integral habitats. For example, lots of shark and ray species give birth to their young in estuarine or mangrove habitats. And if those places are degraded in their quality, then the young just aren't going to be able to survive. And then again, you're going to get population declines because of this. Generally, the areas that are most accessible to people are the areas that are the most degraded. So it's likely the estuarine and coastal shark species that are going to feel the effects of habitat loss the most from a population perspective. This one is definitely gonna be a growing threat for sharks and rays moving into the future too and it's likely going to be responsible for the loss of multiple shark species that rely on these areas. We're talking lemon sharks, the river sharks, bonnet heads, sawfish. These are all shark and ray species that heavily rely on the areas that are going to be impacted the most by habitat degradation. I should also say here that the previous two threats, so climate change and pollution, will also lead to habitat loss. So these three are all very closely linked. Right, okay, up next we've got the shark meat trade, the demand for shark products and shark Shark finning. So there's sometimes a little bit of confusion over these three things, but I'll briefly talk you through them. Shark finning is defined as the removal of a shark's fins while at sea and discarding of the body overboard. The shark fin trade is the sale of those fins, which may or may not have been obtained as a result of shark finning. And then the shark meat trade is obviously the sale of shark meat, but here's the important bit. If a shark's carcass is brought to shore, that shark has not been finned, even if later those fins are removed and sold. The demand for shark fin is actually thought to be declining around the world, and the numbers of sharks that are finned at sea is probably not that high. The shark meat trade, on the other hand, is widely recognized by the scientific community as an increasingly growing threat to sharks, probably more so than shark finning. When I speak to people about sharks and the threats that they face, the first and sometimes only one they talk about is shark finning. But in reality, it's actually most likely that the shark meat trade is the bigger threat to sharks when you compare the two of them. As I said at the start of this video, I'd never blame anyone for thinking that shark finning is the biggest threat that sharks face in our oceans today, because that's what we've mostly read about in the media. As a side note, other shark products to consider here would be shark cartilage, shark liver oil, and ray gill plates, some of which are used in traditional medicines or as supplements. So the consumption of sharks and the use of their body parts by humans is without a doubt a threat to sharks, but it's not the biggest threat. It's probably not even close to being the biggest threat. And so that finally brings me on to the number one threat that sharks face in our oceans today, and that's overfishing. Fisheries, both targeted and non-targeted, are without a shadow of a doubt the biggest threat that sharks and rays are facing in our oceans today. When I say targeted and non-targeted, there are some fisheries out there that are trying to catch sharks, that would be the targeted ones, and then there are other fisheries out there that are trying to catch something else, but might also be accidentally catching sharks in the process, and that would be the non-targeted one, aka bycatch. Longline fisheries, per sea nets, and bottom trawling are all fishing methods that are completely indiscriminate in what species they catch. So you can see how this might end up being a real problem for sharks and rays. As I said earlier in the video, the numbers on this are a little bit tricky, but it's probably in the region of tens, if not hundreds of millions of sharks killed per year. If we take a look at it from a different angle though, a recent study showed that a third of all shark and ray species are in real trouble as a result of overfishing. That number has gone up from a quarter of all sharks and rays to a third of all sharks and rays since 2014. So you can see that the problem is getting worse. Now, out of all those shark and ray species, and there's over a thousand of them combined, 391 of them are classified as being threatened with extinction. And of those 391 sharks and rays that are threatened with extinction, overfishing is the sole threat for 67% of them. The sole threat, the only threat, 
to 67% of them. Those are some pretty frightening numbers when you look into them in detail. One of the major problems here is that all of the threats that we've spoken about today all work in conjunction with each other, which leads to the issue just getting worse and worse. For example, if you're a shark species that's already suffering population declines as a result of climate change induced habitat loss, and then suddenly a big coastal development is built right next to where you live that adds a load of pollution to the water. And then to top it all off, you're getting caught as bycatch in a nearby fishery. You're going to really, really struggle as a species. Wow, it all sounds very gloom and doom. I mean, it is pretty bleak to be honest, but I am a firm believer of ocean optimism. All is not lost. To sort this out, we're gonna need governments around the world to implement very good fisheries management strategies as soon as possible. And these management strategies should aim to strictly protect species that are already endangered, while at the same time ensuring fisheries lower their catch rates back to sustainable levels. So I can hear you sat behind the screen right now saying, Chris, I'm no government official, so what can I do to sort this out? Well, you as an everyday member of the public can make a difference here. If you choose to eat seafood, make sure it's sustainable sustainably sourced. That's the one thing I tell anyone who chooses to eat seafood. Please make sure that it's sustainably sourced. Sustainable fisheries do exist all around the world and it's really important that we push more towards them. There's even sustainable shark fisheries around the world. It's just that there are also a lot of unsustainable shark fisheries. Sustainable fish can literally be traced from the counter at which you bought it all the way back to the boat and the region that that fish was caught. So make sure if you're buying seafood that you're checking the back of it and reading the labels to ensure that you know exactly exactly where that fish has come from. If you're not sure, ask the person that you're buying it from. And if you have any doubts, I would say don't buy it. So there you have it. Those are the biggest threats that sharks face in our oceans today, ranked by a scientist. Go and take this information and pass it on to someone else you know. Before you go though, make sure you stick around to the end screen of this video where you can watch a previous Shark Bites episode we did on common misconceptions about sharks. Like for example, did you know sharks can and do get cancer? So don't click off yet because you will be able to click on that video within the next 10 seconds. Anyway, as always guys, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Sharp Bites channel below by clicking that big red subscribe button and that way you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.